Mom, I'm going away for a long time. Because I did do it. Chilling confession. This local 19-year-old accused in the deadly shooting of a Las Vegas mother confesses to the crime. More of this coming up. Plus. I need Unison. I need Unison's rifle. Stay in here. Send me anybody you got. Call for backup. It's the dispatch call from police as they arrived on the scene first to the deadly theater shooting in Louisiana. Then. Searching for answers, new clues could solve one of the biggest aviation mysteries of our time, the disappearance of that Malaysian Airlines flight. Live from Las Vegas, this is Wake Up with the Wagners. And we begin with breaking news this morning. Beijing will host the 2022 Winter Olympic Games, making it the first city ever country to host both a summer and winter games. I guess Beijing is a city, correct? It certainly is. I remember the last time they held the Olympics, it was the summer games we were talking about then. That's okay, Dana Wagner. It's a Friday morning. It's only 4.30. So, so the, the International Olympic Committee announced this just about an hour ago. Beijing competing against Kazakhstan, a city there for the event, but in the end it's Beijing and they are going to host the Winter Games. I'm torn because I thought maybe Borat would be a part of the welcome crew if Kazakhstan got the, <laughs> the bid, but... Not so much. Not so much. So, Kelly Curran, we are going to be checking in with our Crystal Allen later, and she is ice skating with some people who actually may end up in the Olympics someday. But before we get to that, I know that we have the here and now. And what was it, 90 on our carmometer on the way in or something? Yes, the carmometer showed it 90. It's really warm already, out there for yeah. sure. Yeah, it's definitely warm and muggy start to our day. We have quite a few clouds out there. Also, some showers lingering around the area. Here's a look outside right now. Temperature-wise, like they were saying, it's pretty warm. 90 degrees right now at Russell and Mountain Vista, or 89 degrees now at Russell and Mountain Vista. We are expecting warm temperatures, also showers, and we have a flash flood watch. I'm going to have more on all that coming up. All right, Kelly, we'll check back in just a few minutes at 431. Now to this chilling confession captured on police recordings, Eric Nausch admitting that he killed a local mom, Tammy Myers. You're going to hear the man who goes by the moniker Baby G. We're talking about a 19-year-old, and you're going to hear him in his own words. Here's John Trainer. <coughs> you what? Did you what? Did you what? <coughs> Swear I thought they was going to pop on me, bro. That is the moment. <laughs> Police say the case changed. Sitting shirtless is 19-year-old Eric Nausch, confessing to the sudden, violent shooting of Tammy Myers, a mom who was killed outside her house. What followed was a story born of paranoia. At first, these are the people that have been threatening my family. Like, this is my time. This is my chance right now to get rid of them. Like... This is it. Naush told the cops drug dealers were threatening his life, told them they'd kill his family. He bought a gun, and on February 8th, as he smoked weed in a park, Tammy Myers had her own paranoia. She was giving her 15-year-old a driving lesson, and as the family would later tell police, felt threatened by a driver. She went looking for him. Naush watched their car pass again and again, each time becoming more convinced that behind the wheel were those drug dealers. Paranoia took over. This was not supposed to happen, bro. Mm -mm. So, you no, know, like, you don't understand, like, they what? took out the wrong person, dude. Police say they have their man, and as Eric puts the pieces together, he decides to call his mother, tell her he isn't coming home. I'm going away for a long time. John Trainer, News 3. All right, this is no doubt a story we'll be following all the way through its conclusion, but this is the first time the vast majority of our viewers are hearing from Eric Nausch in his own right. words. And it really gives you some insight into what was going on in the early stages of this investigation that ended up getting national attention. I've also heard kind of a behind the scenes of that interrogation right. from those investigators, and Nausch was denying that he had any involvement for a long time. But I understand that investigators did a great job of massaging the situation also playing to his ego and then Eric Nash broke down and said yep 
I did it and gave them a full confession. I've never heard a suspect refer to a police officer as bro no. before. We just heard that. Also, our producer Kelsey just yeah. told me in my ear that right now, as a news organization here at News 3, we are putting all of that on our website. Good. They're not all the way up there yet, mm -hmm. but by all intents and purposes, by the end of the day, the full confession from yes. Eric Nausch should be at News3LV.com if you want to check it out when you have a little more time. And that shows you how comfortable Eric Nausch was with the investigator calling him bro. That's the kind of relationship, the relationship that they developed that they after they call. did that yeah. for a while. Also this morning, we are hearing the frightening dispatch calls made by police officers who first responded to the deadly movie theater shooting in Lafayette, Louisiana. Get as many units you can, call the SO in the state if, if we have to. 10-4, 10-4. I need units and I need units with rifles in here. Almost 97. All right, headquarters, listen, we need everybody over here. Send me anybody you got. 10-4, we send in everybody. SO's also in route. Take it easy. Everybody's in route. We're coming. This is the man who did it. John Russell Hauser opened fire inside that crowded theater, killing two women, wounding nine others before killing himself. Investigators say Hauser had a history of mental illness and had been living out of a Lafayette motel room for weeks before the attack. Last night, on the one week anniversary of the tragic shooting, hundreds gathered to honor the victims and help the community heal. At 435, another big national story that continues to develop, and it's that fired University of Cincinnati police officer who was indicted for murder. Now this morning out on bail after a grand jury said that he was responsible for killing an unarmed black man. Here's how it went down. Good, take your seat, Stop. We have a couple of points of view here because we do have the body cameras in full effect and you're seeing images from those body cameras. It all started though as a simple traffic stop. It was supposed to be anyway. The guy didn't have his tag on the front of the car and he had it actually in the glove box, showed the police officer. Well, it escalated from there and now the police officer who has been indicted, his attorney is saying, despite the footage that we all just took in, we still don't know the full story. I just got tangled in the car, I thought I was going to run over. When all the evidence comes out, I think that there will be a different version of what went on here. For arraignment. So there is the police officer in question, his name Ray Tensing. He has pled not guilty to murder and voluntary manslaughter charges. The judge just yesterday set his bail at a million dollars. That means he will not be able to get a bail bond for a tenth of that. So Dana, help me with the math. He has to come up with like $100,000, I believe, because the bail was set at a million dollars. I believe going off memory how these things work. A jail spokesperson is confirming that he has been on suicide watch while he was in custody anyway. In the wake of this indictment, the University of Cincinnati his former employer says they're going to review the training for all of their police officers. 436, now a deadly home invasion here in the valley. An 84-year-old woman murdered in her own home. Officers discovered 84-year-old Mary Lubeck's body on Wednesday during a welfare check. This is near Desert Inn and Decatur. Police say evidence shows that someone broke into the home and then killed Lubeck during a struggle. Police officers are not telling us exactly how she died. Neighbors say Lubeck lived a quiet life. She lost her husband just last year. If you know anything that can help catch the killer or killers, please call Crime Stoppers at 385-5555. It's now 437, and a man who once aspired to be a local police officer. He was essentially an intern for the department, a part of this Metro Explorer program you've heard us talk about on the program. Well, he is supposed to face a judge here locally this morning because he is accused of having a four-year sexual relationship with a girl who was only 11 years old when apparently this relationship started. You just saw a picture, and you're still seeing it, of Joshua Honey. He was 18 years old when he met this alleged victim, according to local detectives and he was a counselor at this girl's school. Well, the now 16-year-old girl has told Metro about this relationship, saying that he didn't realize at first how inappropriate it was, and now he is facing multiple charges, including sex assault, lewdness, and kidnapping. We'll let you know what happens when he faces a judge this morning. 438 now, an update to that rapidly developing story. So while the search continues for more debris on that remote island in the Indian Ocean, American investigators are now fairly convinced that someone deliberately 
steered Malaysian Airlines Flight 370 off course. Well, let's just recap as far as the essentials with this story. They had 239 people on board when this plane just vanished off radar more than a year ago. Investigators are increasingly convinced that a suitcase and a potential part of a wing from the Boeing 777 is what's been found from this missing plane. Put it this way, no other plane in the world has that part that is considered missing, the one that they just found at the bottom of the Indian Ocean. All of that debris is expected in Paris by tomorrow, and then experts in France are going to try to determine whether it belonged to the missing Malaysian Airlines flight. But Dana, we've watched extensive coverage on this. We know that the experts have sent pictures and all kinds of things to the Boeing headquarters, and Boeing is saying it looks yes. like it's a part of our plane. Absolutely. Yeah. So now the investigation turns to why, obviously. They've been talking about this now for a year and a half. They do believe that the pilot or someone in the cockpit deliberately turned that plane from its original flight path, but they still don't know why. And they're saying something um, like this that I think is interesting, and it goes to the they don't know why. Was it nefarious mm -hmm. or was it just idiocy? I mean, is the, I mean, is it the idiot defense that I didn't know? Was it one of those like incompetence or were they really trying to do harm to the people on board? 439 now, message from above. The New England Patriots get a rude awakening at their first practice back since the deflate gate scandal. Some rival fans showing new mercy. That's ahead. Welcome back. It is now 442 on this Friday morning and we take you to Foxborough where it was not all cheers no. for Tom Brady in his first practice back following deflate gate. And look at your screen. Here's how it went down. So you see that plane. It is a towing that it says cheaters look up. They believe this came from some Jets fans. Oh, OK. Jets don't like the Patriots very much. <sighs> No, and the NFL season almost upon us. Yes. Already they're in training camp. Still to come, they continue to talk about the lion Cecil, his life taken by this American dentist. Well, where is that dentist? They don't know where he is, Dana. He's in hiding, and we have the story ahead.
At 4.45, we have breaking news to share, and it concerns Cecil the Lion. An official in Zimbabwe is saying that American dentist Walter Palmer should be extradited for illegally killing that beloved lion. The feds are trying to track him down, and when we say they're trying to actually track down the hunter, the American dentist right now, because... They are starting the whole extradition process. Palmer has said that he will cooperate fully with authorities, but according to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, contact efforts have been, quote, unsuccessful. They don't know where this Minneapolis-based dentist is at this point at 4.45 Las Vegas time on this Friday morning. So as this story continues to play out throughout the morning, we will have continued updates. It is 4.45 now, and Dr. Seuss passed away 24 years ago. However, this week, a new Dr. Seuss book was released. How is that possible? Let's find out. Kathy Goldschmidt now joins us. You worked with Dr. Seuss for the last 10 years of his life. So how are we getting a new Dr. Seuss book 24 years after he passed away? In October of 2013, I got a call from Audrey Geisel, who is Dr. Seuss's widow, to say that they had found a box in the house that had materials in it, and it was and that some of the materials in there were the type of thing she thought Random House would be very interested in seeing. And so in that box, you found this book that was unpublished? That's correct. In this box, among other things, was, were, was the virtually complete line artwork for this book and the manuscript for this book. It was an amazing thing to happen so long after he had died. So this thing went on sale on Tuesday, am I accurate in that? And, and you've run a million copies so far, is that accurate as well? That's correct, and we actually have a reprint working at the moment too. I mean, this has to be a bestseller already, doesn't it? Well, we expect to see it on the bestseller list when the bestseller list comes out next week. This week's bestseller list, it didn't pub in time for this one's. Okay, so how do people get a copy of this book? It's called, by the way, What Pet Should I Get? How do people get a copy of Dr. Seuss's book if they'd like? Well, I'm sure they'll find it in all their local bookstores. They can order it online, too, as well. So I think they won't have a problem finding it, I don't think. And you, and you knew Dr. Seuss very well. You worked very closely with him for the last 10 years of his life. He himself had pets. I know that he was mainly a dog lover, but he also had cats in the house as well, Correct. Correct. And we actually, have a, we actually have some information at the back of the, of the book telling all about his pet ownership and his interest in pets, too. Kathy Goldschmidt, so it's cool. been a delight. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I know that a lot of people are excited out there, especially Dr. Fu uh, Dr. Seuss fans. What pet should I get? They can find it online right now. Thanks, Kathy. That cool, is right? so great. Isn't yes, that amazing? I know. It is wonderful. Our executive producer already has, she has two little ones at home. She already purchased one. I said, we'll have to give this one that the publisher sent us to Michelle Velez for Baby Cruise. Right. And that's, yeah. these, are, these are great books for children of all ages. I'm just going to read right now the whole thing no, to you. No, that's okay. So Kelly yeah. Curran. <laughs> I thought I'd read some of it. No. Uh, okay, go ahead. Then what do you know? We saw two other kids. Now how could Kay and I make up our minds? A pup and a kid and they look like good fun. Now which one would we pick? We can oh. only pick one. You have to at least show the pictures, Dana, if <laughs> yes. you're going to have us sit here and listen to you read along. So this is just a quick look-see before we head into the weather department. And Tom Hawley told us yesterday on the program that he loves Dr. Seuss for Nevada Reading Week. Yeah, you know, great books. And personally, I say pick both. I got yeah. a dog. Yes. There you go. Exactly. Get one of each, right? Outside right now, we do have cloudy skies across the area. Very warm temperatures, pretty muggy as well. 90 degrees, the current temperature in Paradise. 89 in Henderson and El Dorado. 86 degrees in Summerlin. 88 right now in Spring Valley. Now, we are expecting precipitation today. And in advance of that precipitation, the National Weather Service has issued a flash flood watch beginning at 11 a.m. today and going through 9 o'clock this evening for all of the areas shaded in green. That includes all of Clark County and the Las Vegas Valley. Again, through 9 o'clock clock so keep that in mind especially as you're traveling on the roadways if you come across one that is flooded turn around don't drown find another route now as we take a look at the satellite radar picture we did have some light showers in the valley yesterday evening we're still looking at a few showers in the mccullough range those are heading towards the 15 so keep that in mind if you're heading to the south and west and a few more to the mountains in the north we are expecting again more showers as we had throughout the day otherwise partly sunny skies light winds 104 for our high today overnight tonight looking at again that chance of storms probably until about midnight 84 degrees for the overnight low and as we take a look at our seven-day forecast 
more chances for showers and thunderstorms Friday, maybe a couple lingering into Sunday, and then sunny and hot to start next week. Monday, mostly sunny, a high of 106. Okay, Kelly, thank you. It is 450 now, and a former Las Vegas 51s player now plays for the New York Mets seen crying on the baseball field on Wednesday night. Well, we had that footage, so our local viewers right. have seen this, but now we have CNN's Jeannie Most with her special spin. Well, there's a you almost can't believe your eyes when you see a ball player with tears in his eyes. Oh boy, what a shot. SNY just took a shot of Wilmer Flores in the field crying, and it is very poignant. But is this 23-year-old Met infielder crying because he made a big error? Doesn't he know? There's no crying in baseball! Unless you think you're being traded. That's what Flores says he heard from fans as he went to bat the previous inning. And he's got to be wondering, perhaps, why he's getting a loud partial standing ovation. I mean, hopefully maybe somebody's read Twitter and told him, hey dude, you're about to be a brewer. The media were reporting a deal that would have sent Flores to Milwaukee. The news spread through the crowd thanks to social media. Everybody in the ballpark thinks he's traded, but him. You guys think this game's easy to play? Play it with like that going on. Flores grounded out, then took his position, wiping away tears, which were replayed in slow motion. Flores signed with the Mets organization almost eight years ago on his 16th birthday. Oh, I was, I was, I was sad, you know, being a Mets forever. But when the inning of tears ended, Mets manager Terry Collins took Flores aside to tell him. There's no deal. There had almost been one, but it fell through, leading one sports producer to compare the Flores and Wheeler for Gomez trade to the time a Chicago paper blew it by reporting Dewey defeats Truman. These days, false news travels faster. Everybody's got a telephone. Everybody's on it. I don't even know why anybody comes anymore. Instead of being jeered for his tears, Flores was praised. That kind of passion can't be bought. A player who wears his heart and his tears on his sleeve. Ginimo, CNN, New York. A little bit more information about him. He became a Met at only 16 years old. He wanted his entire career to be a Met. I have a feeling that it's going to happen for him. Here's an early heads up of what to expect this morning on today. Good morning, everyone. Coming up on today, investigators scouring an island off Madagascar for signs of any more potential debris from Malaysia Air Flight 370. We're going to be there with overnight developments. Then wildlife officials in Africa announced they are now seeking extradition for that Minnesota dentist who killed Cecil the lion, as we hear from the guide who led that controversial hunt for the very first time. Got those stories plus a live concert on our plaza from country superstar Jason Aldean when we get started on a Friday morning right here on today and still to come here on this program an assault of a lifeguard is caught on camera disturbing video capturing three people attacking that lifeguard on duty what started this coming up at six o'clock this morning and a potentially active day for us i'll have more details about our flash flood watch that's coming up
455, and we're all Royals. You know who's playing well right now in Major League Baseball? The Kansas City Royals. The Kansas City Royals. <laughs> they're amazing. They're they're very good. Probably the favorites to win the World Series wow. right now. I know it's till the end of July. So speaking of baseball, former baseball slugger, former Las Vegas resident. I know he spends a lot of time here now. I think yes. he even has a home here in the he Valley. Does. Jose Canseco is back in the news. And for this reason, according to ESPN, he is going to dress like a woman for an entire week in support of Caitlyn Jenner. So he sent out this tweet saying, quote, I wonder what I would look like as a woman. Move over, Caitlyn. <laughs> so he is reportedly doing this for his new web series called Spend a Day with Jose. And the show is going to follow the former athlete around as he plays golf, softball, poker, goes bowling, all while wearing full-on makeup and women's clothing. The last time Jose Canseco was in the news is when he pretty much uh, sawed off his finger or blew off his finger That's at right. the Halloween time when Forgot he was carving that. pumpkins in the kitchen with was, his fiance. That was in Henderson, I think. Was, I know it was here in the a, valley. Was in a local home. Boy, that guy will go to great lengths just to tee off from the ladies' tees. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Which, speaking of that, Kelly Curran, it's not exactly golfing weather today. You don't want to have like a big iron up in the air if we're going to have lightning strikes, right? Yeah, golfing during a thunderstorm is not never good. a good idea. Now, as we take a look at some of the current temperatures across the area, it's definitely pretty warm. 85 degrees right now in Boulder City. Laughlin, you're at 83. Lake Mead is at 89 degrees, 83 in Sandy Valley. We do have a flash flood watch in effect for the entire viewing area, including Clark County and the Las Vegas Valley. This starts at 11 a.m goes through 9 o'clock Friday evening as we are looking at the potential for showers and thunderstorms that could produce heavy rainfall that could, of course, flood roadways. So make sure you turn around, don't drown if you see come across those roads. Now we have seen a few light showers overnight. We've got another shower right now heading toward I-15. Keep that in mind if you're heading south this morning. Temperature wise 106 in Overton, 100 in Pahrump, 108 for the high today in Laughlin. And as we take a look at our seven day forecast now, partly sunny skies, 104 with that chance of showers and thunderstorms today and more chances into the weekend. Okay, Kelly, thank you. And you know, if you get caught on the golf course during a thunderstorm, you just put a one iron over your head. And? That's because Lee Trevino says not even God can hit a one iron. I knew that there was something <laughs> coming here. Okay. It is, it is 4.57 now. And still to come here this morning, a couple of arrests involving children in hot cars. This is new for you in our 5 o'clock hour. The mistakes those mothers made that they want to make sure never happens to anyone else. Wow. And look out. New at 6, a father steers his SUV off the road and into a group of teenagers. It was on purpose. We'll tell you what set them off coming up. You're waking up with the Wagners on News 3.